Well, hey, everybody, thanks for coming back to the CEO for Life Experience podcast. And I am here with Miss Susanna Lemick. Hi, Susanna. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Great. I'm here today with Susanna. And the reason why um, I, I wanted to sit down with Susanna for this episode um, is kind of twofold. One is um, she's a hotshot recruiter. And so I think that's obviously a, a great topic to talk about right now is what's happening in the recruiting world. But from the CEO for life standpoint in, in the context of the book is she has led a great career in recruiting. And then this past year decided to jump in take a CEO type decision and start her own business. So Susanna, I'm excited to talk to you. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Well, why don't you guys, uh, why don't you give us a little bit of context of who you are, what your path has been and uh, currently what you do? Okay. Well, um, I started my career in marketing. I worked for a company, um, university directories. They um, handle marketing for collegiate um, companies. So um, for colleges, uh, working with like mom and pops, how to advertise for um, different colleges and from small towns to um, like bigger universities. And it was cold calling for the mom and pops, how to market to students. And it was minimum 30 cold calls. I uh, started as an internship and I worked for them for four years until after I graduated college. And um, I really liked learning the ins and outs of how small and mid-sized businesses, how they market it, how they worked, how they operate it. And um, from there, I worked with a uniform company um, and I liked being the behind the scenes. I liked seeing how, especially like manufacturing companies, how they ran things, how they took care of their employees, you know, whether they were getting the anti-fatigue mats to take care of their employees for the long days, you know, what kind sure. of PPE they were using. I really liked um, also just like taking care of the small things like, you know, are they gonna get the upgrade of the flame retardant uniform so that they can, mm -hmm you know, really take care of their employees, um, being there for first shift to measure the uniforms, just like yeah. being really in it. And when I got into recruiting, I liked seeing things from that side, from machine operators to recruiting really high level, like CFO, C-suite positions, mm -hmm. and seeing how those decisions on the minute level, whether it was uniforms and you know, facility services, how those affected the team, but also the hiring decisions and just overall culture of the company. And I found that those roles that I had really made a difference for how I was able to communicate with companies because I understood mm -hmm. the employees a little bit differently. And I also understood the strategies of the companies a little bit differently right. as well. Um, and I also just understood the employees, like what they cared about a little bit differently. I could talk to them about the break room. I could talk to them about, you know, just overall blue collar things in a different capacity because I understood their shoes more than the average person because yep. I would fit them sure. for them. Yeah. Um, so I was having conversations in a different capacity and, um, and I fell in love with manufacturing. So for the most part, I recruit in consumer goods, manufacturing and automotive. Um, but I do recruit engineers more than any other position. And um, I find myself recruiting the really, I never say niche properly because I'm from Philadelphia. So I have to like really prep myself before I say that word. Um, <laughs> Go but, Jersey. Yeah. Go PA. The good, really right. um, technical and specific talent roles for companies. So I don't want to recruit every position for an organization. I want to recruit right. really hard to fill roles that they really <laughs> need. A recruiter, the ones that they need a partner for, and where they need somebody to understand their company, their culture, why this position is so important, especially right now, um, because every role is so critical with um, just everything that's going on. You know, like if they're going to hire a recruiter right now with a recession, with a pandemic, everything that's going on, they're going to pay a fee. It has to be worth it. It has to be right crucial because they're laying people off. There's so many nuances that are going on for a company mm -hmm. that if they're going to pay a recruiting fee on top of it, it has to be worthwhile for them. Uh, so I want to really earn my keep. And um, so I work mostly with uh, Fortune 500 companies behind the scenes 
or um, large scale manufacturing companies. Sometimes I'll work with startups, but it just depends on the role and you know how critical it is for the organization. Um, but I don't, you know, just work with anybody. I'm pretty particular. Gotcha. So, so with that in that context and thinking about the CEO for life and being the CEO for your life, how did you come to settle on the vision that you currently have for your life and where you're going and, and maybe walk us through some of your, your thought processes that you brought to bear on that? Um, well, when I first started my company, you know, I, I think of like most, um, you know, I, I really took almost any client at first, cause that's just kind of what you have to do. You have to be scrappy and gritty and, you know, um, yeah. and, and also do trial and error in partnerships, you know? So, um, I definitely worked with some organizations where I had to learn, you know, also who I wasn't willing to work with. Um, so, mm. you know, I would take a company where maybe they looked amazing on the outside. They had an incredible name and brand and they looked like they were going to be a wonderful opportunity. And when I started partnering with them and learned that, you know, they pay for their glass door reviews or they have a really negative culture. There's, there's a reason why they need a recruiter to rebrand. Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. (laughs) People pay for glass door reviews. Wait a minute. What? Yeah, there's a, there's an underbelly (laughs) to corporate America um, on the recruiting side. And so, you know, there's, there's a lot that, you know, like, there's some companies that you work with a recruiter because you need the talent, because you need to find that exact right person. There are some companies that work with a recruiter because you need somebody to rebrand you so significantly because of the decisions that you've made in life. You need somebody to Jerry Maguire you. And I am not your Jerry Maguire. I'm not going to Right. You can't show me that money, you know. Um, so, you know, and, and there are recruiters who will do that, that will rebrand you and make you look a lot better, you know, because of your decisions that wow. you've made. But if you're not going okay. to make changes, you know, then then as an organization, it's not going to be the right long term fit for my candidates. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? you know, and so there's a lot wrapped up in that. And, so, yeah. and there's a couple of things that you said that I want to make sure that the listeners don't miss on is, is one is, you know, there was a lot of trial and error. You just had to start. Um, you learned what you liked and what you didn't like. You kept your boundaries, right? Your guardrails of what your ethics and your values were. Um, and all those things tied together. And so all those things matter, your vision, your mission, you set out goals, your boundaries, your values. And, um, and I love that because it is a per, it's a real world example of those things at work. You are doing those things, you know, that we all talk about in theory, right? but you're executing on it. That's awesome. That's so great. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, so I'm going to go, so you're going to drive me down this road with this uh, discussion. So, um, one of the chapters in the book is called, um, learning to love. No. Right. And as you mentioned in the beginning, you know, when I jumped into real estate, I did the same thing is I had to take every client I could get, right. I had to take every assignment I could get right to make some money. And this was 2007 and eight, right. The worst divorce. But anyway, um, so how did you how did you how did you start the no process? Was it when you started to generate some income and feel about it, or you just tried enough, or you found your sweet spot? When did you start saying no to the things to, so you get laser focused? Um. Well, I I just really leaned on why I started the company in the first place. So um, I started the company because I want it to be a better recruiting firm overall overall for the candidate experience. Um, You know, I had seen some things in the recruiting industry that I just knew that I could do better. I could create a better candidate experience and people deserved overall just a better feel. Um, You know, they deserved higher integrity. They deserved someone who cared about them in the candidate experience. Um, My mom, is an art teacher and my dad's a social worker and um, they are, they just have the highest integrity of any people that I've ever known. And um, I loved my old boss from the staffing world before um, I I was in recruiting and then I went to a job that wasn't the right fit, but, um, and then I started my company. But uh, before doing that, um, the job that I loved, my boss used to always say, Susanna, we're not social workers. And I used to think, 
well, I kind of am, right? Like, you know, like, like, you know, my, my dad was a social worker for 35 years. And I think I like, you know, genetically, right. some of that yeah. in, you know, like, I don't, yeah. you know, like, I, don't think I can get out of that. Right. But, um, but the company that wasn't the right fit, they were very big on get cheeks in the seats. That was their like mm-hmm. unofficial motto. Um, just gotcha. get them in the seat because if right. they don't work out, then you can always replace them, but you get a fee. That's how recruiting works. <laughs> And that is not long-term fit. That doesn't lead to happy clients um, and doesn't lead to people being happy in their careers at all, or, you know, people just being happy in general. Um, And so what I would focus on was what is the best overall fit? What's going to be overall at the end of the day, what am I going to be the happiest at, you know, with for them what's going to be overall the best long-term fit and when I would focus on that and when I would say no to the opportunities that weren't going to be the right fit or if I would try to connect them to somebody who would be better if I would spend like five minutes of my time searching who's a better recruiter for them and I would connect them to that person you know Mm -hmm. I would get so much more back that person would then give me a referral to like an engineering company that would be a great fit for me you know and people think that that's so Pollyanna. They think that never happens, you know, like, oh my gosh, like, or they think that like, oh, that might happen for, you know, the blonde haired, green eyed girl in Georgia. Like, you know, like it doesn't, it, it really like you get back what you put into this world. You mm. do like my, my dad came here from Germany in 1952. He sowed his seeds and every day he gave into to the world you know, all he possibly could. And he has gotten everything back that he gave, you know, like now he has six pack abs and a boat in Florida. Like, you know, like you get back (laughs) so much (laughs) for what you put in. And so I just, I really believe that. Yeah. You know, again, what I love about what you just said is like, it's almost a flip on the negativity of no, right. There's a, there's a positive side to no. And by being able to say no, you're able to be better and you're able to give into the world, you know, and that's, that's what I took from your message was your no is a positive thing because you're actually helping people by saying no to different opportunities that may have been beneficial for you in the short term or your short bank account, right? So that just, you know, the cha-ching kind of thing, but longer term, the no is being positive for building your career and your business and your reputation and your brand. And plus you're making people happy, which is so cool right? Yeah. I mean, people, I mean, sometimes people don't like it when, you know, they'll reach out to me and they'll want to, you know, say like, no, well, I want to partner with you. I heard that you're, you know, the recruiter that I want to work with. And they'll be so upset when I say, listen, I'm not going to be the best person for you. They get so upset. And I'm like, you got to reach out to, you know, so-and-so at this company. And they're like, but no, I want to work with you. But then when they get a job because they worked with that person, they're like, thank you. You know, like, and it's like, Right. Cause that's, that's the expert. That's the person you got to work with that person. Yeah. You know? like, no, it's so true. I mean, I ran into it so much, especially in the real estate business. And I imagine it's probably happening a lot right now because the inventory is so low is people are taking on every assignment and every deal and everything, just trying to make it. But in the end, that really is going to hurt you. And I know there's a struggle and someone listening to this right now is struggling between living the life that they want or the CEO that they know they're supposed to be and the paycheck. Right. And, and that's a, that's a, it's, it's a real thing. So I'm not trying to, you know, I don't want anyone to hear us putting that down. That's a reality. Um, but you can balance the paycheck and your values, your vision, your mission, your goals. What would you say to that, Susanna? I mean, like sometimes people will reach out to me and they'll say, you know, like they, they need a job tomorrow you know, like, well, I need a job tomorrow. I need, you know, I need a paycheck. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, that's fine. You know, you get a gig because we are in a gig economy. So, Mm -hmm. you know, go on Fiverr, go on Instacart, you know, like sign up for a gig that is a part-time position, but don't put that on your resume because that's not, that's not your spiritual gifting. Your spiritual gifting might be, you know, (laughs) design engineer, your spiritual gifting might be, you know, accountant. Okay. So, your resume 
is what you are the very best at and what your career path is, okay? If you're a cost accountant, it better say SAP. It better say, you know, all of your skills at <laughs> everything that you do. And you're not going to put Instacart on there because that's not right. what you're doing long term, you know? Like right. pay bills, feed your kids, do what you have to do, of course, because we all have bills to pay. Right. But like your long game is that, you know, you got that accounting degree. That's what you're, that's what the student loans are calling you about. Right. Like, so, you know, like, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Like, so, you know, our long-term plan is going to be to get you the job that you actually want, you know, and you can have a short-term plan that pays your bills or, yeah. or gets you somewhere. Right. You know, like maybe it doesn't pay all of your bills, but you know, if you're negotiating with those people, I'm going to pay you $25 a month, whatever you have to do. Great. But if your long-term path, is xyz then that's what you're focusing on and that's what you're going to go for and sometimes people do themselves a really large disservice when they update their linkedin every time with their short term short term short term and their negativity and their negativity and they just get themselves in this like headspace of like i'm not going anywhere i'm not going anywhere and it's like mm. you, know, you, you just got on the wrong train you know you got on the local and you meant yeah. to go on the express yeah. like get off that track yeah, the self-fulfilling prophecy almost, right? Yeah. Talk just real quick. And so this just popped into my mind. So, you know, back in my HR days, which was a long time ago, you know, a gap in the resume time frame was seen as a negative. Are we getting into a place where gaps are, are not so much more looked at as long as you're a good candidate? I mean, because, you know. I mean, I think it really depends on where you live and what industry you're in and what okay. the reality of the hiring managers are. So, gotcha. um, you know, if you live, you know, if, if I, I mean, I believe the viewership of your podcast is most likely going to be Chattanooga, Northwest Georgia, for the mm -hmm. most part, if it's like a local mm -hmm. and the hiring managers in this area, for the most part have tenure for the most part, you know, they don't, they haven't jumped around a lot themselves. They don't have that reality, but they are aware of other people's realities. You know, they, they've had to lay off people themselves because of COVID. They've had to go through these other pain points. And so they're realistic people. They understand what people have gone through, you know? So gotcha. they're not going to be harsh on other people just because they haven't gone through it themselves because they've gone through it with their family members. They've gone through it with their friends. They've right. gone through it with other people. Um, so COVID has changed the market and changed different things. But, you know, if they're looking at a resume and the timelines in the past don't line up, you know, if it's not understandable in the past, they're still going to have those traditional things that they've sure. looked at in the past um, because that's their human nature and that's what they're looking for. People are looking to understand. At the same time, I do believe that anybody can get behind a any process if they understand it and so what you want to do is just get a storyline that they can understand and anybody can understand any story any movie if they can just kind of understand your story so make sure your your story is not defensive and make sure it makes sense and if you're telling your own career story or your own path and you're getting defensive or you're getting emotional or you don't understand your own story then you can't sell it and interviewing is sales. So you have to be able to tell it to somebody who's not your mom, who's not your spouse, who's not somebody who loves you and have them buy into it. And if you can right. do that, you can do anything. That's such good advice. That's such a good advice. I, you know, and, and the thing is, is again, going back to some of my thought processes, even before CEO for life was about branding and marketing. So many of us are not prepared to tell our story right in a way that we can try to communicate it well to others and so then when we get in those positions or those opportunities come we're not prepared we're not ready to capture them and then we miss them right and so i love what you're saying about exercising the muscle of your story and um and so that's definitely a ceo for life uh skill let me talk a little bit about one of the things that comes up quite often you know with clients and in, into the book for ceo for life is we're all faced with obstacles. So here you are, you're in this career, you're, you know, you have, you have your life place, you have your relationship, you have your family, you have all this other stuff. You're making some changes. What obstacles other than fear 
<laughs> were in your way of making the decision that you did. So maybe walk through some of the strategies of how you came over those obstacles. Um, let's see. I mean, so other than fear, I, um, I find millennials who start their own businesses and call themselves the CEO out the gate to be a little bit arrogant. That's my own personal belief. Um, I find that's my own personal belief. I'm sure that some people aren't going to agree with me, but I'm the youngest of seven. Okay. So I, I've got people who humble me pretty, pretty hardcore. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. so I decided when I started my business that I was not going to be a CEO title out the gate. I wanted to earn that title every step mm. of the way. So I gave myself mm. a title that would be similar to the title that I was leaving the organization. And as I accrued certain milestones that were in alignment with the staffing industry standards, and as I accrued zero debt as an organization. So this year I accrued zero debt as an organization, mm -hmm. which was especially difficult having a NICU preemie in 2017 mm -hmm. um, and other mm -hmm. challenges. And my husband's also Real self stuff. Yeah. Um, so it, it felt like I'd earned it though. Um, I decided that I was officially ready to be in the C-suite. But um, so I've been self-employed since 2015, but I felt like this year getting through COVID and achieving zero debt as an organization with my preemie being born in 2017, I have earned being in the C-suite. But um, that's like a fun fact about me that I didn't feel like I'd earned it in 2015. I needed to get a certain number of clients, get a certain number of revenue, get a certain number of hires. That's who I am as a human. And I don't think that's normal, but that is who I am. Um, and I think that that was really helpful for me though, is that I set goals similar to staffing standards so that I felt like I achieved a certain mm -hmm. level. And I would almost recommend that for women, especially, um, women of my age, because when I go into a meeting with men, with anybody, I feel like I deserve my seat at the table with my title wherever I am and, and have whatever my title was on the business card because I had earned that title. That's, that was my title because I had earned that spot. Um, right. And so um, I think that that's very helpful <laughs> in hindsight because... Yeah. You know, it wasn't like I just gave it to myself. It wasn't like, right. you know, I started an LLC and it was there. Also, um, I would like to one day be a rich white man on level. And so in 2015, I hired a team of rich white men to help advise me. And so I have a rich white man lawyer, a rich white man accountant, a rich woman. They all go golfing together. They're like a team. So I felt like I had a team and they all work together. They all, you know, know each other. And so um, while now I have a team of people that support me, I also felt like day one, I have my team, you know, like right. I've got my yeah. team of integral people and they have experience and they know what they're doing and they're great advisors. And they had over 30 years experience each. And so mm -hmm. while I was new, I had this great team of guys yeah. <laughs> who were supporting yeah. me. And like sure. my lawyer is a former pastor. And for some people that might not matter, but for me, I felt like great. <laughs> you know, I'm on like board, I felt right? Like, yeah. 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 Like I felt like we're, we're on the right side of things because that's that was important to me. So um, I feel like that's a long answer, but that really helped me navigate obstacles and feel supported. Um just all yeah, all. there's two create there's two critical concepts that you, you laid out in your in your real life story, which is you had self-awareness, right? And so you put yourself in check to make sure you didn't go down a hole of just, you know. I had I had a really good friend who, who when he started his business and I was still in HR and he was he was firing his first salesperson and he came to me and he was asking advice how to go about it and everything else. And I was like, Well, what's the story? And in this person had an entitlement mentality, right? And he's like, 
you know, where was this person when I had to take out the garbage? Where was this person when I had to fix the printer? Where was this person, you know, when I had to do all these other things, right? You know, and, and, I, and I love that, that you, just two things, the self-awareness, you, you enjoyed the journey and you gave yourself the ability to, you know, to, to grow into that role. And I love that, that's awesome. And then the other piece is, is that you looked at your shareholders and that's what CEOs do, right? Who are my investors? Who's my board? Who are, you know, who are those people that, you know, that pour into me and I pour into them and you created your team and you knew exactly what to do. So those are two critical C for CEO for life concepts. That's awesome. That's so good. I, I don't know what else to say after that, because like you've hit all the points. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. So, um, you know, as we kind of wrap things up, uh, everyone who's listening or watching, I'm going to link uh, Susanna's information either up above or down below wherever you're watching or listening to this. Um, every person that I've tried to bring to the podcast, I've tried to find givers and Susanna definitely is a giver. So, you know, I, I would, I, I push this every episode please do not let this just be something you listen to on one and a half times speed. Do not let this just be something you watch. Reach out for these guests because they're real people. They've lived it. They're givers. And I know Susanna would uh, respond to your LinkedIn or, you know, get back to you on anything. So I hope that's okay, Susanna. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you. All right. So um, if you want some more information, it's uh, 110recruiting, right? Dot com. And that's the, that's the name of her company. So yeah, but again, I'm going to link everything up as we wrap up this, um, this, this episode, what is on your heart right now and that you could probably impart on someone that you'd want to share to help them understand that they can become the CEO for their life? What, what would your thoughts be? I just think that you can really do anything that you want to do in life. You really can. I think that so many people wait. Mm. They wait for that sign. They wait for someone else to hand it to them. I mean, so many people wait for even like a recruiter to reach out to them and say, you know, like, Hey, this is your dream job, or this is your opportunity. And it's like, go after it. And also yeah. you don't need to create your dream job necessarily. You can have a conversation with somebody and that can lead mm. to a dream job. Like, mm. don't be afraid if you want to work for Georgia Pacific, or if you want to work for, if your dream job is Nike, if you always wanted to work for a great company, but you're not connected to anybody at that company on LinkedIn, like, what are you waiting for? Like, they're not going to just find you and think like, oh, I'm going to just find Brad Jones, just like dreaming about him. Like, you know, like, like connect with that company. If that's your dream company, you, it's so easy now, like type in that company, Type in some titles of people that you think might be good people to be connected to. I'll give you some, you know, human resources, chief operating officer, you know, like marketing, you know, like just type in some good titles, right? Go high, go low, right? Like, you know, like go see sweet because some like, you know, like go to the people that only have like 70 connections because you know what? They need some friends. Okay. And then <laughs> like make some friends like and then like their content and they're going to start noticing you and when they have a job that lines up with you they're going to call you because you're going to be on their radar like it's it's not rocket science it's, sure. it's so i would just say that like anything you want to do you can really do but like that's the easiest well, the the susanna gauntlet has been thrown to anyone <laughs> listening or watching so <laughs> yeah. you know you know i would Hey, just stop this right now and go do it. If you're listening or watching, just hit stop and go do it, according to Susanna. So, Susanna, thanks so much for being on this episode. So appreciate it and your wisdom and uh, and your energy and your light that you bring to it. And, um, you know, it, it's exciting. So um, if you're going to connect with Susanna, just either look up above or down below to connect with her. And um, we'll see you on the next episode of the CEO for Life Experience podcast. Thanks, Susanna. Thank you.